Hi guys, this is Alex from Legitcheck by CH. Uh, as some of you might know, we recently added the watch category on our website. There we post free guides for the community where we offer differences between the authentic items and the replica ones. Uh, we started with the Rolexes, we are about to add some new, some new models as well and we are going to cover as much as we can from the most popular watches on the market. Uh, today we are going to speak about the Rolex Datejust 41mm, more exactly reference number 1263.34 and we are going to offer you the tells uh, present on our guide, on our written guide which is available for free on our website. We will offer you those tells in, uh, in this video guide in order to further assist you to differentiate the replica items from the genuine items. So right here in my hands I've got an authentic Rolex Datejust worth more than 10k USD and one of the best fakes of this watch which costs about 500 USD. I'm gonna challenge you to pause this video right now and let me know in the comments which one's the authentic one and why. In a few seconds I'm gonna tell you the answer, so stop it right now if you wanna join me and play this game. After that we're gonna have a deeper dive into how to tell the fake from an authentic as we're expanding our library of fake versus real comparison guides for watches. And if you've chosen this one, then you are right, stick with us to find out why. Now we're gonna give you a quick rundown on what we will cover in the video guide. We will cover 9 steps and we will start with the first step which is about the date wheel. Make sure that the number representing the date is perfectly centered in the date wheel. The second step about the Cyclops lens, make sure that the lens magnifies perfectly the date in the date wheel and also it has its anti-reflective coating available. For the first step you will need to take a look at the Rehot engravings and make sure that all those engravings are perfectly aligned with the minute markers. The fourth step we're gonna take a look at how the watch flips its date. So make sure that when you're trying to wind the watch or set the date manually, the watch instantly flips its date at midnight. For the fifth step we're gonna take a look at the dial color and we're gonna make sure that the sunburst dial effect is present on the genuine item. For the sixth step you will need to verify how your watch glows in the dark. This is about the lume that's present in the watch and the fact that you need to be able to comfortably read the time even in a dark environment. For the next step, the seventh step, we're gonna take a look at the watch's solid handlings and how those have to be perfectly linked between the bracelet and the watch with no gaps between the links on the bracelet and the watch's locks. For the eighth step, we're gonna take a look at the bezel and you will see how the light has to perfectly be reflected from the fluted basil. For the ninth step and the last step you're gonna check the bracelet on the watch as well as the engravings on the clasp other design elements present there. On the left side in the video you can see the the genuine item the one with the roman numerals while on the right side you can see the replica item. This is the top replica item so it's pretty hard to differentiate this item from the genuine one unless you have some knowledge about it and of course it's even better if you have both watches one next to another in order to to easily see the the tells on the watches. The first tell that we're going to discuss about is the date wheel on both watches. The genuine always has the number that says the date has this number perfectly centered in the date wheel what we call the date wheel and of course you can see it uh, if you're going to magnify it through the cyclops lens you can see the number perfectly centered in the, in the middle. Uh, on the replica items, most of the times, the number is not perfectly centered, as well as the font is not perfectly replicated from the genuine item. This means that it's either bolder, I mean the font is a bit bold. Uh, this takes us to the second tell, which is the Cyclops lens. The Cyclops lens on the genuine item perfectly magnifies the date present on the date wheel, while on the replica sometimes the magnifier doesn't work that good because it's a cheaper material, it's not treated with an anti-reflective coating, so it might reflect much more easily sunlight, while on the genuine item because of this anti-reflective coating you will perfectly see the date and uh, you will barely see any, any sunlight in it, of course depending on the angle that you're, you're holding the watch. The third tell when it comes to the Rolex Digest is the Rehot engraving. The Rehot is the inner circle next to the dial under the crystal is the gray area where you can see engraved the, the Rolex letters 
spaced between them, equally spaced, as well as the crown at 12 o'clock and the serial number of the, of the watch present around 6 o'clock. On the genuine item, the engravings are perfectly centered with the, with the minute markers. The Rolex crown at 12 o'clock will also be perfectly centered at a 90 degrees angle with the middle of the watch, while on the replica one, most of the times, uh, it might be some dials might be aligned with the with the engravings however if you take a look at the entire circle at some points you might notice some letters that are not engraved centered with the minute markers for the fourth tell we're going to discuss about how the watch flips the date at midnight actually when the date changes at midnight the genuine item will always instantly flip the date while on the replica item you will notice that most of the times the date starts smoothly flip at, I don't know, around 11.55 and stops flipping and turns to the next date, the next day at about 12.05. So you, you have to keep an eye on this as well. Another important notice uh, when it comes to this tail is that this will happen, this will be available also when you will try to manually wind the watch. So if you try to change the date manually, you will notice that on the genuine item it instantly flips when you go about midnight, while on the replica one it smoothly flips as you smoothly wind the watch and change the, change the minute. So guys, for the fifth tail we're gonna inspect the, the dial on the, on the watch and the sunburst effect. On the genuine item you will always uh, have this special Rolex sunburst effect, meaning that uh, the light that comes onto the dial gets reflected in a very nice way on the dial. If you're gonna hold it in your hand and rotate it like this, you can have a full overview of this effect that I'm telling you about. On the replica items, some of them like this one, this top replica one, have a nice sunburst effect there. But of course, if you're holding it one next to another, if you get the chance, uh, you can totally feel the difference. Uh, in case, I don't know, anything doesn't look good to you when looking at the dial and inspecting the sunburst dial effect, uh, it might be the case that you're holding a replica item in your hands. So uh, pay close attention to the way the light reflects from, from the dial as well. Cell number six is about how your watch glows in the dark and actually the lume, the chemical treatment that's applied on the dial, on the minute markers as well as on the hour and the minute hands, uh, how they reflect in the dark. Of course on the genuine item uh, you can easily spot the hands and the dials in the dark while on the replica ones because they use cheaper materials, cheaper chemicals actually, uh, you won't spot it that easily. Again, if uh, anything seems suspicious when you're trying to check the time in the dark, it might be the case that you're holding a, a fake item in your hands. Uh, on the genuine item you will always easily read the time, uh, no matter how dark is in the room, as long as the lume is, uh, is charged. The solid end links are those links that actually link the bracelet with the watch. So the solid end links are those end links, as the name says it here, below the 6 o'clock marker, as well as those above the 12 o'clock marker. Uh, if you inspect them, on the genuine item, those solid end links will always be perfectly linked with the watch, with no gaps between them, with no sunlight that can go through them between the between the lugs and the and the links. While on the replica watch, some of the times you will have gaps like here uh, at 12 o'clock on the right hand. You can see you can easily see that uh, you you kind of have a gap that's that's not symmetrical with the one on the left hand. Furthermore, it's, uh, it's pretty wide. This doesn't have to happen on a, on a genuine item. For the eighth step on our guide, on our video guide, we're gonna discuss about the basal. The basal is the, is the outer circle on the dial, uh, which is actually known as the fluted basal, in this case, for the Rolex Datejust. Uh, depending on the material used, it reflects the light in a more, let's say, elegant way than the replica one. Of course, the high quality materials used in the Rolex they just genuine item perfectly and elegantly, smoothly reflect the light, whatever the source of light might be. While on the replica item, uh, in some cases, uh, because of the cheaper materials, of course, the light will not be 
reflected in such an elegant manner. For the ninth step and the last step uh, in our video guide on how to spot differences between a Rolex they just fake item and a genuine one, we're gonna discuss about the bracelet as well as the clasp on the watch. Uh, when it comes to the bracelet, the Jubilee bracelet, which is actually the standard bracelet offered for the, for the Rolex Datejust, has to be perfectly manufactured with high materials, high quality materials, very flexible and easy to maneuver. Uh, also regarding the clasp engravings, you will find the Rolex logo engraved on the clasp as well as the Geneva and Swiss made engravings. On the other side of the inner clasp you can find another logo of Rolex, the steel inox inscription and the code, the bracelet code. Those have to be perfectly engraved in the same depth and with the same style. On the replica item, this is a very nice bracelet, it's pretty close to the, to the genuine item unless you're holding both of them in your hands. It's pretty hard to tell even from this video guide the difference is, it's actually more of a feeling difference. However, when it comes to the engravings on the inner clasp, you can easily notice, and we will show you a close-up picture of those, the engravings are not done in the same manner as on the genuine item. It's actually the depth of the engraving, as well as the letters themselves and the other designs. Guys, thank you so much for watching us. I hope the tales that we presented today will be useful for you. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe, to like and share our video. And of course, don't forget to leave us a comment with whatever watch model you would like us to cover in the future. Because we'll be, we'll be doing more of this and we'll be adding more videos. See you soon. Bye.